Sink your teeth into the mysterious allure of the 1936 classic, Dracula's Daughter. As a sequel to the iconic Dracula, this film offers a unique exploration of vampiric lore. Unraveling the enigmatic legacy left by the infamous Count, Dracula's daughter poses questions about the enduring qualities that have solidified its place in cinematic history. What scene or moment in this movie has left an indelible mark on you? The film's lasting impact often lies in its atmospheric tension and the nuanced portrayal of the titular character, Countess Maria Zaleska. Beyond the conventional horror tropes, the movie delves into the psychological struggles of a vampire grappling with her identity and the haunting quest for redemption. Reflecting on its significance, consider what makes Dracula's daughter a timeless symbol of the industry. Is it the atmospheric cinematography, the eerie soundtrack, or the groundbreaking exploration of vampire mythology? The film's enduring qualities invite exploration into the nuances that elevate it beyond the confines of its era. As you revisit this classic, share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Dracula's daughter. Whether it's a spine-tingling moment, a connection to the characters, or a nostalgic encounter, we would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Now, let's shed some light on random facts about the show. Did you know that Bella Lugosi, who portrayed Dracula in the original film, was originally slated to appear in Dracula's Daughter? However, due to contractual disputes, his character was omitted. These behind-the-scenes tidbits add an extra layer to the film's history. So, what's your take on the timeless allure of Dracula's Daughter? Share your thoughts and experiences below, and let's unravel the mystique together. Dracula's Daughter, released in 1936, held its own unique production quirks. Despite Bela Lugosi's absence from the film, set photos captured moments with Gloria Holden, the actress portraying Countess Maria Zaleska. Interestingly, these images highlight their collaboration behind the scenes. Another connection to the original Dracula arises in the film when Dr. Garth's driver agrees to travel only as far as the Borgo Pass, mirroring the limits set by Renfield's driver in the preceding movie. This nod offers continuity between the two films. Initially intended as a project for director James Whale, the film underwent changes due to an unconventional script he submitted. His departure led to a substantial influx of scripts and treatments from various writers, showcasing the extensive effort poured into shaping the movie. The behind-the-scenes dynamics, absent Lugosi yet featuring glimpses of him, the subtle callbacks to the preceding film, and the directorial alterations collectively contributed to the distinctive creation of Dracula's Daughter. Four days after production wrapped, Universal's principal creditor, Standard Capital Corp, seized control of the studio and the Lemel family, including patriarch Carl Lemel, who had founded the studio, were unceremoniously kicked out. This pivotal moment in Universal Studios' history followed the completion of the film Dracula's Daughter. Despite the movie's creation, the studio faced financial turmoil leading to the takeover by Standard Capital Corporal. The timing of this event marked a significant shift for Universal and the Lemel family, altering the studio's ownership and future direction. The film itself, released in 1936, became part of a legacy tied to the studio's changing fortunes, adding a layer of historical context to its production. The intertwining of behind-the-scenes business upheaval and the release of Dracula's Daughter serves as a testament to the complexities within the film industry during that era, where financial struggles often shadowed artistic achievements. The 1936 movie Dracula's Daughter stands out as the last horror film produced under the supervision of Carl Lemel. Following its production, Universal Studios faced a pivotal moment, marked by financial turmoil and a shift in ownership. The movie's release coincided with Universal's takeover by Standard Capital Corp, forcing the Lemel family out of the studio they had founded. This behind-the-scenes business upheaval added a layer of historical context to the film's legacy, showcasing the complexities within the film industry during that era. Despite the studio's changing fortunes, Dracula's Daughter remains a testament to a transitional period in Universal Studios' history, marking the end of an era under Carl Lemel's supervision. The Countess in the 1936 movie Dracula's Daughter delivers an altered version of the famous Hamlet quote while discussing psychiatry with Dr. Garth. This adaptation adds a unique layer to the film, infusing a classic literary reference into the dialogue. 
The movie draws inspiration not only from Bram Stoker's story Dracula's Guest, originally meant as a chapter in Stoker's 1897 novel but excised due to length, but also from Sheridan Le Fanis' 1872 short story Carmilla. These sources contribute to the intricate tapestry of influences woven into the film's narrative, providing a rich background to explore the Countess character and the thematic depth of the storyline. The incorporation of these elements from literary classics marks a significant aspect of the movie's depth and connection to well-established Gothic literature. Taking place immediately after the events of the 1931 film Dracula, Universal originally aimed to create a sequel based on Bram Stoker's short story Dracula's Guest. Negotiations with Stoker's widow revealed a twist. Stoker hadn't met a U.S. copyright requirement for Dracula, rendering it public domain in the U.S. This altered plans, prompting Universal to hire John L. Balderston for a new story. Initially casting Jane Wyatt as Lily, the studio pivoted to Nan Gray, favoring her blonde hair that contrasted Gloria Holden's lead. This move aligned with a Hollywood preference for contrasts and villainesses. These behind-the-scenes shifts shaped the narrative direction and casting of Dracula's daughter, showcasing the intricate decisions that influenced the film's development. Director Lambert Hillier encountered an unexpected setback during the early days of filming for the 1936 movie Dracula's Daughter. On the ninth day of production, which aligned with a Thursday the 13th, Hillier sustained an injury when a fill light fell on his head. Despite nearly half a day of lost shooting time due to his brief hospitalization, filming continued from February 4th to March 10th, 1936, with Hillier eventually leading the project. This incident marked an unusual start to the movie's production, setting the stage for an intriguing behind-the-scenes journey. Despite these hurdles, the film eventually became part of the original shock theater package in 1957, cementing its place in cinematic history. The transition of directors from James Whale to Edward Sutherland, and then Lambert Hillier also added layers to the film's creation, showcasing the intricate dynamics behind its making. As the curtains close on our exploration of Dracula's daughter, I urge you to embrace the enigmatic allure of this cinematic gem. Venture into the depths of your memory palace and excavate the moments that this film has etched into your consciousness. Was it the haunting elegance of Countess Zaleska, the chilling atmosphere, or perhaps the subtle dance between horror and humanity that resonated with you? Whether it's the first chill-inducing viewing or a nostalgic return to this 1936 masterpiece, your connection with Dracula's daughter is a tapestry woven with personal reflections and emotive threads. Share your cherished recollections, thoughts, or newfound revelations. Let them breathe life into the essence of this timeless classic. In this communal journey of cinematic appreciation, your voice paints vibrant strokes on the canvas of this film's legacy. Your perspectives enrich the narrative, turning mere scenes into cherished memories. Thank you for embarking on this reflective venture with us. Your engagement and passion are the fuel that sustains the eternal allure of Dracula's daughter. Until we cross paths again in the realms of cinematic wonder, may the echoes of this tale linger in your thoughts, evoking contemplation and fascination. With appreciation for your time and enthusiasm, 